Welcome to Tuesday night at the Roadhouse Biker Church. Amen. Well, quick update on things here. You know, the riff is rolling along in our meeting that we had. Um, they're still planning on uh, June 30th as their completion date. Praise the Lord. Everything's on track and whew. Soon and very soon, we should be able to get rolling right along there, amen. Um, they gave me a few day fudge factor in that, you know, whatever the heck that means, but know that I will be staying right on top of this stuff. You can count on that, amen, because I am ready for church, just like you guys are, and we're, we're close, amen, but... In the meantime, let's have some announcements, amen. Horizons 2020, you never know what's waiting for you on Saturday night, amen. You never know what's waiting for you every other day of the week either in 2020, but praise the Lord. You know what? We're praying through, and however Dad directs the traffic, one thing that I do know for a fact is the roadhouse will just continue to keep moving on down the line. Amen. Because we always have and we always will. And with all you amazing Jesus freak, beautiful people here, I have every hope and confidence that we will close out this mad year in a very powerful way. Amen. Frontline Warriors, has your job been essential? Have you continued to work over the last few months in the madness? Amen. Masks and all the stuff. You guys are rock stars, man. Send a photo of you in your work environment to roadhousebc at gmail.com. We want to honor you. The Bible shares that we... Uh, give credit where credit's due, and I can assure you that credit is due to you. Amen? So get those photos in, please. And here's a happy note. Roadhouse get-together ride. That's right. Come on out and enjoy a beautiful ride, and then hang out and have dinner together at Cookie Man and Cookie Mama's house. Join us for our next get-together ride this Saturday. June 20th, meet right here at the Roadhouse at 4 p.m. Remember, it's 10 bucks a person, no potluck. The cookie people are laying it all down, amen? And you know that when those two get into the kitchen and their little uh, aprons and whatnot that they wear, awesome things happen. Not the least of which, fresh Cookie Man cookies right out of the oven amen bikes and cages welcome participate at your own comfort level love and respect same thing you know red dot green dot stuff it's all still applies amen just uh come on out ready to be together with your family again amen and uh soon and very soon soon and very soon amen well, hey, check it out. As we're continuing through the book of Judges, we've come across another area, if you will, that is biblical history repeating itself right in front of our eyes. Amen. And it's good. It's not good what's happening, but it's good that it's written in the Word of God and we can we can read it and study it see where mistakes were made amen and see where victories were won and prayfully avoid some of the pitfalls that came upon these folks amen so we're gonna be tearing into chapter 18 of Judges tonight to grab your Bible Let's open up in a word of prayer. And Father, we lift this up to you tonight, Lord. And, and we can see, we can see with our eyes 
the things that are happening around us that were already written thousands of years ago in your word, Lord. And we understand, Father, that this is an instruction manual on how to get through this stuff, Lord, not to go down similar roads, but rather to turn to you with all of our hearts, our mind, and our spirit and strength, Lord, that we might find the victory in all the madness that swirls around us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen? Can I get a big old amen? Hallelujah. All right, well, check it out. Let's just dive into chapter 18 of Judges, and I will show you what I mean. Here's your opening question. How bad can life become when God no longer is the focus? Amen? And that's what's happening right now. We've seen this steady decline, and, and the reason it's, it's really wild to me is because in our own country, in our own nation, we've seen also a strange decline of ideals and thoughts that were that have manifested into a reality that's like a parallel universe to live in well the same thing already happened has happened most likely will happen again amen but as believers on jesus christ we can learn ahead of time and be prepared right see we kind of got this secret weapon called the bible amen and it's an entire manual on how to live a godly life. And not only that, but it shows us the other side and the mistakes that were made. And then it shows us the victories and how they were attained. Amen. And to the wise, if you can't look at this stuff and see that what's been happening over the course of this year but even, you know, prior, but mainly in the course of this year that is lined right up with the book of Judges, man. It, it is such a trip to me how God speaks so loudly sometimes and people miss it. Amen. But check it out. We're not going to miss it here. No way, Daddy-o. We're going we're gonna to take all this and we're going to absorb it and we're going to learn. Amen. Well, the whole point of that question was, because at this point, we, learned, we read last week in chapter 17, that every man did what was right in his own eyes. That was what was happening in this time. So there was no counsel. Um, there was no leadership necessarily that was coming together and discussing something, formulating a plan, and then moving on it. Everybody had their own idea of what they wanted to do and how they were going to do it. And nobody really agreed on anything. It was just a constant bashing. And then, you know, from left field, some wingnut would come in with some other crazy madness that would just further complicate an already complicated situation. So, at this time biblically, as it is in our time historically... Confusion reigns supreme. And we all know, I just talked about this in the devotional, confusion is not of God. Amen. I think it was actually Saturday night, maybe. I can't remember now. Anyway, we don't serve a God of confusion. We serve a God of order. And God has things lined up in a certain way so that order can be maintained, right? Well, as soon as people start running their own program, Nobody's going to agree on anything. And then what you end up with is these little factions everywhere. And what results is chaos and anarchy and madness. Amen. And so here we are tonight in this place of chaos. And here we are today in America in this same place of chaos. And ironically or not, depending on how you want to look at it. The whole reason about tonight was about coveting. And it was about not being content with where you were, what you are, how you are, and looking to something else and saying, I want that. And you know what? Furthermore, that's owed to me. I'm entitled to that. And 
it gets ugly, man. All right. And, and remember, what we're talking about is Israelites here. Sort of, I suppose. Anyway, we're going to be, you know, referring to the Danites here. That This is a tribe that during the time of inheritance were given a real choice piece of land, you know, out of all the division of the land. And, you know, everybody would go into their own land and, you know, battle it out with the people that were there and, you know, dispose them, dispose of them, depose them, dispose, depose. Anyway, make them go away or, you know, kill them. And some of the tribes weren't able to pull that off and rather started living among them. And we saw a lot of that in previous chapters where the paganism started infecting God's children and lots of bad things started happening. Well, in this case, with the Danites, they ended up just running. They took off and, and literally, you know, head for the hills, and they did. They went up into the mountain area, which sucked, you know, as far as trying to grow stuff. And they were very um, unhappy with their situation that they put themselves into, and grudges began to grow. Now, if you've ever been one that's held a grudge or um, experienced a grudge against you, then you know how that root tends to grow and grow and grow and grow. And as it grows, it gets less and less and less reasonable. And it makes it more and more difficult to talk through and work through something when the ears are completely plugged and words are no longer valuable, usable. And here we are today in this situation. And here we are today in the book of Judges. So let's start here in 18.1. Um, we're going to blast this through to... Uh, the 31st verse kind of rolls together. Amen. So it says in verse 1, In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites was seeking an inheritance for itself to dwell in. For until that day their inheritance among the tribes of Israel had not fallen to them. Although it did, but they lost it. And this is where that grudge began to come in because everybody was kind of doing their own thing now. And that was a problem, as we read in previous chapters, when battles and stuff took place, people weren't coming and standing together, cohesive as they were in the days of Joshua. They were managing their own madness that they had found themselves in. So these guys started looking at other lands and stuff like that. And they weren't the biggest tribe, you know, as far as, you know, numbers. So they had to kind of go out and do a little bit of spying around to find the, the right place. But in this mindset, they were in the mindset of whatever we see and we want, we're gonna take it because we've been kind of left behind on all this stuff and we're owed something. We have something coming to us, and we're going to go get it. And here we are, right now, in a place of no conversation, no reasoning, and a mindset of, we're going to just take it, and there's nothing you can do about it. And what you're seeing on the news is exactly what we're going to be reading about tonight, the the destruction, the fires, the chaos and screaming. It's all right here tonight. So, so the tribe, verse 2, So the children of Dan sent five men of their family from their territory, men of valor from Zorah and Eshtaol, to spy out the land and search for it. They said to them, Go, search the land. So they went to the mountains of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, and lodged there. Now, this is where Micah's whole turning his back on God, wanted to run his own program, have his own gods, his own little idols and worship shrine and all that stuff. This is where it's going to come back and bite Micah in the butt right now because 
he wants to run his own program, God's going to allow him to run his own program. Amen. And as you're going to see, these idols, these carved images, these multiple gods, this narcissistic self-absorbedness is no defense against a group of like-minded people. Right? Okay, so... While they were at the house of Micah, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. Remember the, the priest for sale from last time, last chapter? They turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? And what do you have here? You know, are you, are you like a captive? Did you come on your own? I mean, you know, hey, what's happening? What are you doing here? And by the way, you got any, what do you got here? You got any good stuff around here? That was the mindset. This was biblical looting that you're going to see here. It's such a trip. It really is a trip for me to study this stuff and watch the stuff that's going on around us and see how God correlates things. It's just mind-boggling to me. Anyway, but that's what they were doing. They went there, and the first thing they started doing was look around and see what they could take. And they're like, who are you and who are you with? Are you with us or are you with them? Well, he said to them, thus and so Micah did for me. You know, he did this, we did that, we kind of made a deal. He has hired me, and I have become his priest. That's what he said. He gave me money, and I became his priest for hire. And, and just so you know, what priest for hire means is I'll say whatever you want me to say to you that's going to make you feel all warm and fuzzy. You give me some money, turn around, and I will rub your butt. And you're going to just have this beyond blessed life that's completely fake and false. Has nothing to do with God. Well, this guy is really good at it. Because watch. So they said to him, Please inquire of God that we may know whether the journey on which we go will be prosperous. Look, Jonathan already knows they're coming there to loot. They're coming there to tear stuff apart. They're on a rampage across the land, and he's staring them right in the face right now. He's staring right in the face of, who are you for? What, what name are you spray painting on the side of a building right now? You know what? And by the way, since you're a priest, tell us, you know, is this all good? Are we on the right path? And of course, the priest is going to tell them, no, this is completely not of God. You know, God... God's never, God hasn't been inquired on any of this stuff. And God provided a land for you. And, you know, this is what the priest should be saying. Well, look at the priest says. And the priest said to them, go in peace. The presence of the Lord be with you on your way. Let me, let me rub a little hiney right here and sugarcoat everything that you want me to say. Oh, yeah, man, your rampage. Yeah, God is with you, man. The Lord's with you the whole way. You guys rock your cause is right on man and the way you're going about it perfect knock yourselves out and the priest so so the five men departed and they went to laish and this is the place they were spying out this land and there's a really good reason why they chose this place and i'll show you it's bizarre but i'm going to show you they saw the people who were there how they dwelt safely in the manner of the Sidonians, quiet and secure. There were no rulers in the land who might put them to shame for anything. They were far from the Sidonians, and they had no ties with anyone. They were prosperous, could mind their own business, you know. They got their belief system, but... They'd rather just as soon be left out of all the political junk, you know, and got themselves a nice little town up in the mountainous areas, you know, not far from the ocean. Really cool, away from all the rigmarole of all the cities and potential allies that might help them right now. They just said, you guys, you guys stay down there in the big cities with all your buildings and you uh, burn it to the ground if that's what you want to do. We're going to stay up here 
where it's safe and quiet. Amen? I know. Sounds vaguely familiar, right? Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem then and the problem now. The scourge of society today, as far as I'm concerned, is people are not content with the life that God gave them. For whatever reason, they feel like they want more or they deserve more without having to actually go work for it, you know, necessarily. And they start looking at other places that are established and not highly protected, kind of peaceful people that are going to be easy to push over or push out, if you will. But here's the deal, Pickle. Everybody has issues of some sort. There's nothing perfect anywhere on this planet because this world exists in sin. Amen? And as long as this world is the way it is, there'll never be a perfect place to be. So even though you might see something that looks better, there's still going to be problems there. You kind of go from one problem to another. And the crazier thing is the stuff you left behind, there's somebody else already eyeballing that because they think it's better than the spot there and right there. Because there's no contentment. There's no joy and happiness to just be who and what you are in Christ. And there was no joy and contentment here either. So these guys, it says, the spies came back to their brethren, Zorah and Eshtuel. And their brethren said, so what's your report? What'd you see? What'd you find out? So they said, arise, let us go against them. For we have seen the land and indeed it is very good. Would you do nothing? Do not hesitate to go and enter to possess, to possess the land. When you go, you will come to a secure people in a large land for God has given it into your hands a place where there is no lack of anything that is on earth remember the priest told him God was with him <laughs> and they're saying when when you read that you know they found a, a people that are secure that just means they're they got no worries they got no problem they're just going about life and everything is cool because they have separated themselves from all the madness well guess what the madness is coming to them amen so they went up and encamped at Kirjath Jermon in Judah. Therefore, they call the place Mahana Dan to this day. There it is, west of Kirjath Jerem. They passed from there to the mountains of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah. So they're kind of, you know, doing their route, and Micah's house is kind of over there as they're, like, you know, heading in that direction. And then the guys go, Hey, you know what? I just remember something. Watch this. Remember the priest was cool to him. No opposition to them coming through there and, you know, being all tough and whatever the heck they were. Then the five men who had gone to spy out the country of Laish, Laish answered and said to their brethren, Do you know that there are in the there are in these houses an ephod, household idols, a carved image and a molded image now therefore consider what you should do what are you guys thinking huh I mean we could just keep right on going but hey kind of on the way I mean let's just go kick some doors in man let's go break some windows and grab some stuff well we're you know there's some good stuff over there why not I mean who's gonna stop us let's just go do it that's what was being said right there the mob mentality every man thinking for himself and a couple guys go, hey, I got an idea. And that's how it all starts right there. In our, in our time, it goes on social media with a little poster or something that says, hey, check it out. We're going to meet over here at, at this mall at 2 o'clock, and we're going to gather right there to, you know, to protest. But there's an element in that crowd that already has other plans, man. There's an element in that crowd that's already spied out. Maybe not just this town, L.A., Minnesota, wherever all this matter is going. They've already looked around and checked stuff out, and they know where the heck they're going to be going. And that's what's happening right here. These guys are going, hey, you know what? I've already kind of been through there, and dude's got some stuff. What do you guys want to do? So they turned aside there. 
whoop, made a quick turn and came to the house of the young Levite man, to the house of Micah, and greeted him. How you doing, man? Now, you know that greeting right there was awkward and you could feel the tension and stuff that's going on there. These guys are back and they're up to no good, right? The 600 men armed with their weapons of war who were, who were of the tribe of Dan stood by the entrance of the gate, all right? So here they all are ready to do their thing. The priest stood at the entrance of the gate with the 600 men who were armed with weapons of war. So he kind of came out, right? And this is very indicative of, because just keep in mind, this paid priest was the paid spiritual leader, if you will. He was the guy that was kind of the father. Remember from last week, the, the father figure, the mentor, the guy that, I wouldn't say he was in charge, but he was certainly held a high office. Okay, if you will, maybe a mayor, all right, um, something along those lines. So, when these went into Micah's house and took the carved image, the ephod, the household idols, and the molded image, the priest said to them, what are you doing? Hey, what are you guys doing? You can't just come into our city and, you know, put up barricades and start taking stuff out of there. What the heck's going on here? What are you guys thinking here? What are you doing? I mean, you can't come into Micah's house, what I meant to say. And, you know, just come in and kick doors down and break windows and take whatever the heck you want. I mean, what are you guys doing? And they said to him, be quiet. Put your hand over your mouth and come with us. Be a father and a priest to us. It is better for you to be a priest of the household. Is it better for you to be a priest of a household of one man or that you be a priest to a tribe and a family of Israel? So the priest's heart was glad. And he took the ephod, the household idols, and the carved image, and he took his place among the people. He sold out. He sold out his boss. He sold out his people. I mean, he already kind of sold out his people coming to Micah in the first place. So he's kind of a, a career sellout. But in this case, he was kind of like the mayor. You know, he was kind of leading all this stuff. And as soon as this crowd, you know, came mobbing up there, and, and they said, put your hand over your mouth. I mean, don't speak out against us. Amen. Be quiet. Keep your mouth shut. No uh, opposition to our cause and what we're doing here. Go check it out. You can you can be the priest of this. You can be the mayor of this little place, or you can be the mayor of this. You know, and man, just like that. All of a sudden, he's grabbing up all the idols. The priest grabbing up all the idols and stuff like that. Goes out to the gate with all the people and sets them down right there. You know, people are like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? He goes, hey, it's all cool, man. It's like, it's like the summer of love here, man. It's all good. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. That's what's happening. Amen. When the leaders sell out their people it's history man it's history here and it's history in America now weird right but it all just flows together well check it out we're not done yet so then they turned aside and departed and put the little ones the livestock and the goods in front of them so they did all their looting everything they wanted to do they were heading to their, you know, town they were going to take over, you know. So they put all the kids and the cows and animals and the, the stuff they took up in front so that, you know, when Micah or anybody, the army would come, they'd attack from behind because they were heading that direction. So they wanted all that stuff, you know, when they turned around to fight, it would all be behind them. Okay, that's why they lined it up that way. They were expecting a response to come. So they put up a barricade between them and their good stuff. Well, their stolen stuff, I should say. When they were a good way off, when they were, when, let's see, when they were a good way from the house of Micah, 
the men who were in the house near Micah's house gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. So they did. They gathered together and they said, hey, you know what? This isn't, this isn't cool. This isn't right. This isn't how we do stuff in this country. Amen. We're, we're going to come and make a line. All right. We're, we're going to oppose you is what we're going to do. We're not going to let you just come in here and do whatever the heck you want. And they called out to the children of Dan. So they turned around and said, they stopped now. They turned around. They're like, okay, you want, you want to do this right now? Is that what you want to do? They turned around and said, what ails you that you have gathered such a company? What are you so bent out of shape about? Hey, all that stuff is ours, man. We had every right to it. What are you, what are you getting all bent out of shape about now? And now you're coming up here like you're going to do something? What are you going to do? And look, look at how Micah answers. So sad, all right, but so indicative as well. So he said, you have taken away my gods, which I made. What? This is how far away Micah was from God. And don't think that there's people in our nation right now that are in the same exact place that far away from God. It's startling how far away they are. And gods which I made, and the priest... And you have gone away. So you took all my stuff and you took my priest too. I own him. He's mine. I pay him. I pay him for all his, you know, rubbing and whatnot that he does for me. And you guys just came in and took him. And look what, the, look what happened here. He, go, he goes, now, now what more do I have? How can you say to me what ails you? Now you took all my stuff. What am I supposed to do now? Hey, dude, you know what? That's your stuff. That's your land. That's your property. Do I really need to tell you what to do? But when you're in the mindset of defeat and weakness and moral confusion and everybody's trying to run their own program, there's no cohesive leadership anymore going on. Because the leaders are now bowing down and whatever the heck it is, you know, they're, they're doing besides leading. This is what you get right here. And the children of Don said to him, do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry men fall upon you and you lose your life with the lives of your household. Don't oppose us, buddy. You think it's bad now? We'll tear your world apart. Don't, don't even speak at us. If somebody even hears you opposing us, we're coming. We're going to come and tear the rest of your town down and everybody else's towns around you. Don't even say a word. Just shut up like that priest. We told him to shut up. You ought to follow his example right there. Don't say a word. If anybody even hears you say you're going to oppose this, it's on. So keep that in mind there, Micah with your guys your guys right so Micah just said charge and attacked right then the children of Dan went their way and when Micah saw that there were they were too strong for him he turned and went back to his house he gave up gave in gave it all away just like that no conflict, no opposition, just let them go. And once that happened, you're going to see what happens. Once there was no opposition that says, hey, you know what? we got laws in this land, and you're breaking them right now, and everybody is subject to the law. So nobody is above it. Amen? Well... So they took the things Micah had made and the priest who had belonged to him. Isn't that weird? The priest that belonged to Micah? It's true, though. He bought it. People are bought and sold all the time in our country. Politically speaking, uh, manufacturers, uh, leaders of groups. It seemed like everybody's got a price. Everybody's got their price. And it was here many 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 years ago and it's still alive and well right now and we are reaping 
all that corrupted stuff right there. Amen? So anyway, took the priest who belonged to him and went to Laish to the people quiet and secure and they struck them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire. <laughs> I'm not laughing at this. I'm just... It's not funny like funny haha. -ha. It's like funny like that ain't funny. You know, we're, we're living it right now. There's no opposition. And so things progressed and ratcheted up. And they continue to ratchet up. And they're going to continue to ratchet up. Until it becomes something really horrible, I'm afraid. Amen? That's why we keep praying through all this stuff and keep asking God's hand to be upon it. Because the fuse is lit. And when the fuse hits the powder keg... We don't want the fuse to hit the powder cake. Amen. We want to pray that God miraculously contains all this madness. Because look, they burned the city with fire. There was no deliverer because it was far from Sidon. And they had no ties with anyone. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rehob. So they rebuilt the city and dwelt there. Right? They're going to rename it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tear it down, set up the way they want it, and rename it. I'm not making this stuff up. It's in the Bible. We've been rolling through this from the beginning. I didn't pick this chapter to be at. Dad picked the chapter, and we ought to be paying attention to what he's showing us and telling us here. Because you take this chapter... And hold it up to your TV during a noose, and you'll see what I'm talking about here and what God's talking about here. Amen. We have got to unify as a family of believers and use the power of prayer. I'm telling you, man, we have got to come together. And we're not. A few here and a few there, and some even show up to incite more. I'm talking about beyond revival <clears throat> of the Holy Spirit, you know, and power and joy and laughter and blessings and things like that, which is something that needs to happen fast. But the power of prayer as believers all gather. Maybe it needs to be a social media thing that says on this day, at this hour, just stop what you're doing, man. And pray for the situation in our nation right now. Pray for our leaders' brains to like click back on or whatever the heck is going on. But the power of prayer is massive and things happen. Amen? So, they called the name of the city Dan after the name of Dan their father who was born to Israel. However, the name of the city was formerly Laish. There was a city... And this is what it was called. It was taken over. And now the city has been renamed. Rebuilt and renamed. And there's nobody there to defend it. Then the children of Dan set up for themselves the carved image. And Jonathan the son of Gershom the son of Manasseh. And his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan. Until the day of captivity of that land. Which is an important factor. All right, They set it up the way they wanted to. They tore down what they wanted to tore down, and they spray painted whatever they wanted spray painted around there so that their idols were now prominent. They put the person that they were in control of as a position of power and authority, so to speak, or really more than anything, just a mouthpiece, if you will. And they renamed the city, of course. But all this went on until the day of the captivity of the land when God said enough that's a little verse right there that needs to be paid very close attention to because the captivity came in the form of Babylonians came in the form of the Assyrians and we read all about that stuff when we were looking at Nehemiah and Ezra and all those books remember Esther here it is right here this is the beginning of why it happened 
everyone was thinking for themselves. They did what was right in their own eyes. God was completely left out of everything. And at some point, he said, enough. And when he put his hand down, boom, it was hell. Hell on earth. And I'm here to tell you, God is the same God today as he was then. He hasn't changed one little bit. He is long-suffering, but he does have a point that he'll reach. And if you don't think we won't get all caught up in this, I can assure you there was a many, many God-fearing Jews that were caught up in all of the captivities that went on there. We read about many of them as we went through there. Daniel is a good example of good people being caught up in the firestorm. Let's pray through Let's pray that firestorm doesn't hit again. Amen? And, and if you think there's not countries looking at us in all of our turmoil right now and going, hmm, I wonder, then you're, you're either you got your head in the sand or you're just not paying attention to the world right now. But understand that America is vulnerable. Amen? They know it. We know it. And that's what happened here. They became vulnerable. So, uh, so they set up for themselves Micah's carved, images, carved image, which he had made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. So what, what just happened there was there was a godly group but nobody was turning to them. People were only turning to their idols and whatever the heck they wanted to do. Amen? Well, check it out. Even though those carved images are all being set up right now, there is a house of God still. It's called the Church of Jesus Christ. We're it. Amen? I don't know what was going on there with that group of believers, and I'm not totally sure what's going on with us as believers right now. Amen. But what I do know is leaders need to come forth and, and call for prayer. Need to call the believers together in unity and stand up in prayer. I'm not talking about going to war. I don't want war. I don't want to go shooting people, and I certainly don't want people shooting at me. Amen. My prayer is that God handles all this stuff. That's my desire of my heart that things don't turn uglier than they already are. Like, it's going to turn for these guys here. We're going to see it. Amen? But let's purposefully, on a daily basis, when you, maybe you're doing your devotion, maybe when you're praying over your dinner, whatever, talk to God about the condition of our nation, the spiritual condition, the social condition, the emotional condition, financial condition, everything amen and let god know that we love our country and that we trust him and we trust his judgments and we humbly approach his throne and ask for his mercy to be upon our nation kind of like i was talking about yesterday sing praise to him let let god know we believe as christians he's still on the throne his son Jesus is still the king, and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme right now. Amen? Just take the minute. You'd be amazed how powerful these little prayers are. And then they start to build. They'll start to take on momentum. And then before you know it, social media is no longer inundated with just all the junk and violence and madness. It's so celebrated now, but becomes inundated with God and prayer and Jesus and hope and mercy and grace. That's what we need to act on. Amen? Here's your get it question tonight. How can we protect ourselves against following false gods? Don't. All right? Don't. Don't. Amen? 
Get in your words. Stay deep in your words. Stay in fellowship. Stay in prayer. When you're starting to think about getting all goofy and doing this or doing that that you know is not pleasing to God, stink and stop it now, all right? Because you're getting sucked in to all this lawlessness that's going around, and you will pay dearly for it. They're going to pay dearly for it. God can't, God won't be mocked. He can't be mocked. God will handle this stuff. I promise you, you don't want to be on the other side of that. Amen? We want to be on the right side of God's judgment when He decides to fix all this stuff. So if you're already thinking in some stupid way that you know is stupid, all right, I don't need to name them all out for you, all right? Let me just tell you, you're in a particularly dangerous time right now to be playing games with God, okay? Not a good time to be doing that. Not that there's ever a good time, but I assure you, righteousness is coming. And when God has to force rightness, it's never a pretty sight. It's all right here. We see it many times. What's wrong with trying to use God for your own gain? <laughs> hey, we just read about what's wrong. Saw what happened with Micah right there? Look, again, God can't be mocked. You're not fooling God. Nobody fools God with their pious blah, 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 stuff like that. Look, God blesses us immensely. There's no reason to try to okie doke and play games with God or God's people to try to get rich or something like that. If that's the case, you're probably not one of God's children anyway. Right? Oh, that one stung. Well, I'm sorry. Amen. But let me tell you something. The treasures and, and wealth from God are within, man. It's the stuff on the inside, the way you see the world, the way you react around humanity. That's the true riches of God. It has nothing to do with money. God wants you to have some money, you're going to have some money, all right? But he won't give it to you until you're freaking bright enough to handle it and mature enough to take care of it. I can promise you that. And if you ain't got it, well, there might be something you can talk to God about right there and go, hey, how come, you know, you don't feel like I'm mature enough to, you know, have a whole bunch of money? He's probably going to share with you why, exactly what you would do with it, which has very little to do with God. Amen? The love of money, amen, it's the root of all kinds of evil. Keep that in mind. Not money, it's the love of money that draws us away from God, amen? Be content. Learn to be content and be blessed. I promise you, you will be a much happier, calm, joyful person the second you stop looking outward at what you want and what you think is yours, amen? And look within at what God's already given you. You might just find you're wealthier than you ever imagined, right? Just saying. Here's your application tonight. It's a small step between serving yourself and serving God, like that, amen? You see somebody else kind of prospering and stuff like that, Man, let me tell you something. That's all over the proverb. Don't look. Don't keep your eye on those that are prospering and they're evil, because you look at them and go, "Man, they got so much money. They got nice cars. They got nice houses. Yeah, they're ripping people off and they're doing these scams and schemes and things like that. Or they're slinging dope or whatever. But I mean, look at all their stuff. They're so happy around their swimming pool and stuff like that. I can I can tell you something, man. They live a life of terror and fear from every side. Not only the cops that might come and bust them, but all the others like them that want what they got, like we just read about right here, like the Danites that are looking over their fence to see what they got and planning a scheme and the way they're gonna come in and take it with machine guns and stuff like that. What a fun way to live, right? I don't think so, man. I'm pretty content in my tiny little house that I have up there. My, my little old white Chevy truck that I got, my old beat up dog, I got a guitar to play. You know what? I could step outside my front door and breathe in and breathe out. There ain't nobody out there trying to creep on in and take what I got because they probably got more than I do. And that's fine with me, man. I'm content. 
You know, you know, want to talk about being wealthy and rich? Let me tell you, wealthy and rich. Standing next to your grandkid with a bunch of chicken and vegetables and stuff and sticking them on a skewer and just enjoying every little piece that went on there by his direction. All right? There's no value to that. It's priceless. Amen? That's what I'm talking about right now. Look, if, if you're flipped out right now, if you're already like looking at all this stuff, but you're, you feel like, you know, everybody else is doing it, but it's not really my bag, but you know what? I don't want to be a, a weirdo. Look, you're already a weirdo, okay? The only difference is between us and you is that you're a weirdo that's lost in sin. And tonight, if you're watching this stuff, this is a Holy Spirit setup just for you, man. A woman, whatever. And there's a bunch of people here that are praying just for you right now to, to allow you to have a conversation with God to be rescued out of that destructive life that you're living. And I'm here to tell you right now, man, you don't have to live like that anymore. Not one more second longer. Amen. I'm going to pray with you. They're all going to pray with you. So Christians, you know, be praying right now. All right. Because there's somebody I'm talking to right now out there somewhere or two or three or 10 or 20 or a thousand. I don't know. It doesn't matter what that's about. What's about is you're watching right now and you feel the tug on your heart. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit of God. That's Jesus Christ, man. He loves you. He died for you. And he rose on the third day for you. And you know what? Let me tell you something else. He's coming back for you. We're not going to be here forever, man. We're going to a place called heaven for all eternity. And I want you there. Amen? So I'm going to pray a prayer. You just repeat after me, all right? You're not going to be praying to me. You're going to be praying to Jesus Christ. Amen? This is all about you just knowing in your heart that you're a stinking sinner. Because you are. And knowing in your heart that you need a Savior. Because you do. And knowing in your heart that you want to spend eternity in heaven and not hell because you do. Amen? But mostly, you feel a yearning to be close to God and serve Him. Praise the Lord. So just repeat after me as everyone's praying with you. All right? Father God, I sinned against you, Lord, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and put me on that road that you'll have me travel. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hey, check it out. If you said that prayer for the first time and you believed it in your heart, man, I believe you're saved. You're a new creation, man. You are a child of the Most High God and nothing's going to be the same. Amen. Get a hold of me. RoadhouseVC at gmail.com. I want to talk to you, man. I want to Give you a call. I got some stuff I want to send you because I want to welcome you into the family of believers. Amen. And out of the destructive world that's out there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, man. It's a crazy time we're in right now. But remember, I just read a whole story of very similar crazy times. But here's the deal. Pickle. They came and they went. Amen. And so shall this be. This too shall pass. Amen. But we need to stay faithful to our King. Stay on our face in prayer. And continue to worship Him in song and praise. Amen. Be happy. Be joyful and be blessed. Okay? God bless you guys. I love you. Till tomorrow, keep your eyes on Jesus.